weekly show where we talk about things going on in the world of Magic the Gathering, gaming, and pop culture. For episode 39, as always, I'm your host, Justin Partnell, joined by my co-host, Ali Antrazi. What's up, guys? What's up, Justin? Oh, well, you know, going about my life, one Dominaria spoiler card at a time. One Dominaria spoiler one, one at a time? No, it's usually like 142 at a time, but I've tried to parcel myself out over the last few weeks. Okay, okay. So what did you, what did you do last weekend? Uh, I did not do very much. I did a lot of relaxing, but in the in between the, that relaxing, uh, I, did, I did manage to play some board games. Actually, right. just one board game. Um, uh, I played with um, my uh, commander co-host... Jeremy Knoll. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a board game day like every month at his house. And this week we played, or this month we played a game called Time Stories, uh, which is, have you seen the movie Edge of Tomorrow? I don't think so. Okay. This is going to be a lot harder explanation then because that's been my go-to. First of all, that movie's freaking fantastic. It's a Tom Cruise movie. When I saw the trailer, I thought it was going to be crap, but it's not. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, um, and you're playing as this like group of agents from the future. And you're going back into time to stop like a certain events from happening, but you get like transported back into bodies, people that are basically around during that time. Oh, I think I've seen, and it, I think I've seen this movie. Okay. Um, but you, are they kill if, people? Like, uh, like they kill people before it happens or something or the movie or something like that. In in the movie, uh, they're fighting like this alien war, but uh, Tom Cruise ends up um, he keeps dying and getting transported like back to the past with his with full memory of I'm of what down. happened. I'm this down. Okay, <laughs> it's a great it's it's a it's a legit great movie. Anyway, so you're playing the you're playing agents. Uh, and you get transported back to the past to try to f figure out like this mystery or stop this thing from happening. Um, but it's very difficult and you only have so much time before like your energy runs out. Okay. And uh, when you do, you literally start the game back over. But you obviously have all the knowledge of that you did the previous game and you still like like basically like where things are like on the map and stuff. Uh, and it's a legacy game. So there's only one playthrough until you can't do the scenario anymore. But they have, like, different scenarios, because the scenario is not as good as you, if you know everything that's going to happen. Right, right, that makes sense. Um, so that game was a lot of fun. We did not win, though. Yet. Okay. We will. Well, what about you? What did you do this weekend? Same thing. It's I, I'm leaving the past. I'm traveling through the past. Same thing every, okay. every time. Play Hex tournaments. Get X, get X2. Yep, uh, that's that's virtually the same thing. Yeah. It's like a top 16 and, sometimes, top, sometimes. And then you, sometimes, and then you wake up two. with all of the knowledge of of Hex having a tournament system where they need one extra round and you're like, oh no, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that, that's happened to me. Um, except this time, yeah, we got top 32 in both events going X2 where people with my record top 8 Little, little, Ollie. little tilting. Uh, stop me if you've heard this before. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But also, I've also been playing Pokemon Go a little bit. Um, okay, that's good. Been trying to do the the mute thing. I'm doing it super casually. Like I'm still doing the. Uh, yeah. I still got a raid. I still got to. I still have to do another another raid battle, to go to the next one. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on the fourth level. Is that the Ditto one? That is. No, the Ditto one is the next level. Okay. That one's gonna be tough, I, I think. That one's gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah, it's just random. It's just random. Yeah. This, oh, this one you have to get like uh, you have to walk like you have to get like twenty. You have to walk like twenty kilometers with your butt. I don't know. I don't Whatever. know. Easy, easy peasy. Yeah. What else you do? Just, just, just chilling. Hex. Yeah, hex. Oak, Oak Oak Mongo. Mongo. Basically it. Play, uh, some, play some arena. Played some arena. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. Me too. Trying to get the two hundred gold a day. Yep. 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 Uh, we also had a question of the week last week. We did. And this was one that you and I agreed on. It was. Which is which is notable because that's not always something that happens. Uh, question of the week last week was, in last week's magic story, which was uh, 
Return to Dominary Episode 5, the flavor, or Episode 4, four the four. flavorfully name Return to Dominary Episode 4. Yep. So you, the one that you know exactly what happens based on the name. <laughs> um, outlined uh, an interesting interest uh, or an interesting event that happened with the Church of Sarah, which led you and I to believe that something more than we than we know is going on. Mm-hmm. And something seemed a little fishy. So we asked everyone, do you guys think something going on, something seems fishy, something seems off about the Church of Sarah? Uh, 46% of you agreed with Ollie and I. Uh, you said, yes, something fishy's going on. 28% of you said, no, they're just angels. You guys are overreacting. Well, time will tell. Time will tell. How appropriate that that is the... Thing for Dominaria? The yes. thing for Dominaria that time will tell. Yeah. Uh, so... Speaking of Dominaria, this is going to be a very Dominaria-filled episode, as I guess the next, you know, probably several months will be. Yeah. Um, but we have, uh, you know, we haven't talked a lot about preview cards yet. No. Um, but our first segment this week, we are going to be taking, uh, we're going to be kind of doing a two-part Dominaria review of the entire, not of the entire set, I don't want to say that. Yeah, it's not but we're going to try to... We're gonna try. Well, we're gonna try to cover as many bases as we can as far as how Dominaria makes us feel, what we think of the cards, what we think of the flavor, what we think of the setting, everything. Yep. This more has to do with the cards and the story, but obviously, in some cases, they're closely linked. So, Ollie, do you want to hit us with some sweet uh, theme intro outro music to yeah. transition us? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, People really liked that last week. So. Did they? Well, one person All at right. least. Here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder. What you are up above, Dominaria so high. We're going to look at the cards right now. Ba-da-boo. All right, and we're back, Ali. <laughs> uh, thank you for that interlude. Uh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So we have a lot to cover, as we said. So the first thing that I want to ask is a simple question. I'm ready. Tell me. All of your thoughts about the set. 38. You have, you have 38 thoughts, or that's just your that's, answer? That's my answer. Okay. Um, uh, no, but ser- for, Where do you want to start? Yeah, start yeah, somewhere. For, for, for serious, though, I, uh, I think Dominaria has been a, like, a huge success. Like uh, Going back to it, I knew it was going to be like cool and exciting, but and nostalgic almost, but I wasn't really sure like cool. what to expect, right? And just seeing all the, like, seeing all these cards come up and all the art come up and there were, there was a, there was a, there was a moment where I was like, oh man, this is way too many, this is way too many legendary creatures. And to be fair, I still kind of feel that way a little bit, but, uh, just seeing these like awesome new spell, like the new legendary spells, legendary sorceries that yep. aren't epic, but are epic, like, yes. like that are cool or like unique in their own way. And then, and then on top of that, seeing like uh, seeing the sagas, which is like a com- completely different take on enchantments, or which n- never seen yeah. before. That's that's also new, and like it's just. And on top, on top of all that, on top of all this new stuff, it's still very nostalgic. It's still very like dominaria. It's like uh, the art's been phenomenal. The art's like everyone's been raving about the art, especially the saga art. Um, when I first saw the frame, I was like iffy on it, but now I'm like sold on it. It's been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think it's just, this is, I think, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. It's exciting. I mean, I agree. I actually think, uh, I don't, I mean, it's difficult to say when you see something that's new and exciting that's like, oh man, this is one of the best magic sets ever, but maybe it is because it kind of hits all of the notes. I mean, like, I mean, when I saw vehicles, I was like, eh, eh I don't know about that. I don't want to, yeah. I don't. This is the old, this is the only time I was like, like I've seen flip cards, man. I've seen planeswalkers. I've seen transform cards. I've seen all kinds yeah. of cards. The only time I was like meh was vehicles because I don't want I don't want a race car in my magic magic story. Yeah, know? yeah. But uh, I'm super excited. I, I, I'm hyped for sagas. I'm I, obviously obviously they're gonna be slow, but like they're sweet. Even just like having them as like art or whatever. I'm excited for I'm excited for a lot of, a lot of the stuff. Yeah, I think uh, to talk about the mechanics. Um, I think sagas are really interesting for mm-hmm. sure. Like no, no doubt. Um, I, the, 
I guess there's three primary mechanics. One we've seen before, which is kicker, um, which is is one of the most beloved can- mechanics in Magic, and for good reason. Uh, it's extremely versatile. I mean, it's two spells in one, yeah. in most cases, at two different mana costs. Uh, it's an actual limited mechanic. It's a good constructive mechanic. It just it feels fun, um, which is something that obviously that is not just important for Magic, but it's specifically important for this set because. Uh, Honestly, this was like a can't you the wizards couldn't miss with this set. They didn't have the ability to go back to this world and have the set be crappy. And it's not, which is great. I mean, not only is it not crappy, but it's I think it's excellent. Yeah. Uh you talked about sagas, I pretty much agree with everything you said. Um I think historic as a mechanic is one of the sleekest, cleanest mechanics they've ever made because it's not just it's not a mechanic in no. the sense of I don't know, like in the sense in the sense of energy or infect or it's not, it's not new. It's just being worded to be new. Exactly. And the thing is, all of the cards that are affected by it, historic doesn't appear on any of those cards. Like historic, even though we know that in this set, Mox Amber and Jaya Ballard and Oath of Teferi are historic cards. They don't say historic on any of their cards. No, right. But the cards that care about historic are like, okay, if you have something, if you cast a legendary spell, if you play a saga, or if you play any artifact, they're all historic. Yeah. So it sets up so beautifully with the entire history of magic because you could have cards that care about historic cards, and then for every card for the rest of time that's printed, that's a, that has a legendary subtype that's an artifact or a saga, which we're probably not going to see. Well, we're probably, I, I doubt we'll see these again. For a really long time, but that's okay. Yeah. So isolated one set, but still legendary creatures and artifacts, which are in every single magic set ever. This mechanic cares about that, and these cards will just continue to get better over time, without a doubt. There's nothing that can make them worse. Right. I mean, that's I mean, a beautiful mechanic. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty good now with uh, the the Frixian one, the one that destroys all non-artifact creatures, and you, the way you can like loop it with just a power conduit where. You, by removing counters, because power counter removes, removes counters, you can like in, in modern, you can just literally, literally loop a a board wipe every single turn by removing a counter. I thought Frixian isn't isn't that the third uh... Frixian scriptures? Oh no, that's number two. Destroy all non artifact creatures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I had I had the uh, number two and number three backwards. I thought Exile destroy All Cards all from All Opponents Graveyards was okay. number two, and then Destroy was number three, but yours makes more sense. And it's how the card actually works. Right. You're right. Just ignore what I'm saying. Okay, sure, sure, sure. But I'm just saying, like, you can loop it, or you can set it to that so that it always uh, wipes every turn, board wipes every yep. turn. Yeah. Which is, which, I mean, just, it's just, just kind of cool. It's like neat, neat, neat interaction, so. Yeah. It is. There's, I mean, and there's a lot of things that, like, mess with counters. Yeah, like Clock Spin. From 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 yeah. Dominaria. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Uh, well, 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 yeah. Well, clock clock spinning from time spiral, but set yeah. on Dominaria, sure. Yeah. Um. Uh. One of the one of the most important things. In in my opinion, that happened kind of around the set, was not just, the fact that this set, was leaked almost entirely early and yet has still gone on to have a traditional preview season, which is crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's like everyone collectively, and this I don't think this will ever happen again, where everyone at Magic is like, you know what? We didn't, we didn't want that, and we're going to be just as excited when each of these cards are individually previewed. This was honestly, and I, I don't, I don't think that they did this on purpose. I, did, I don't think that they leaked, they, that, no, they no, leaked no, no. that document on purpose. But the fact that they did. The set was good. People were still excited about it because they knew that the card art and the flavor text are so critically important to this set specifically Absolutely. that you could still know what the cards did without knowing those other things and the rarity, which I'm going to get to in a second. And it's still like you were able to have a regular spoiler season, at, if not enhanced by what happened. Yeah, this actually kind of reminds me, this is kind of a, a tangent, but when you and I made our custom cube, we did this where we had no art, we had mm-hmm. no flavor text. All we had was the, the what the card did and the mana cost, and we, yeah. we made people test with it. And it was like people were like, they really they weren't really that into it honestly. They, they they did it, but they weren't like, but adding art 
adding that flavor text, adding like all like those moving pieces just make the card like so much more enjoyable to read and look at and like just pop out. Yeah. It's, that's what it's, it's crazy. Cuz that's what that's what magic is. Yeah. Like it's the whole part. It's yeah. not just the text. Yeah. Even for people that play purely competitively, if you're playing this game, that's something you care about at some level. Oh yeah, some people that's why, some people memorize cards just based off uh, based off uh, art. Art? Yeah. I do a lot. And think about it like you can't say that you don't care about you know, like the history of the game or X, like different flavor. It's like, okay, well, if that's the case, what lightning bolt are you using? Are you just using the cheapest lightning bolt or are you using lightning bolt that you like how it looks the best? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, we're, we're tangenting a little bit. Yeah. Um, anyway, the larger point I was trying to get to is this is in, in an incredible way because that leak happened. No one knew what the rarities were on the cards, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people guessed, and a lot of people were wrong, myself included, a lot. Wizards has reset what it means for a common to be a common, an uncommon to be an uncommon, a rare to be a rare, and a mythic to be a mythic. Okay. At, 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 a, at an incredible rate in this set. At notice that, so why don't you enlighten us? Okay, sure. So um, they moved, they kind of shifted... Uh, a lot of the cards for what it meant like per rarity. So what I mean is a lot of legendary creatures, are, there's a lot of legendary creatures that are uncommon in this set that in previous sets, clearly based on their effect, would have been rares based on effect and flavor. And obviously legendary is kind of a theme for this set, but even still, it's like, well, if these cards are kind of even though they're exciting and fun and they have like cool effects, they're still kind of narrow in what they're doing. So that's okay to be on an uncommon card. The mythic cards don't necessarily have to be like, which is what they intended for mythics. Don't have to be, even though they're going to be, um, you know, planeswalkers uh, are always going to be mythic. But outside of that, there are cards that, that have a big feel to them. They don't necessarily have to be, like the most brutally efficient cards, even though some of them still are. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like, what does this feel like a mythic rare? Not is this good enough to be a mythic rare? Because, you know, when the card, uh, my, my favorite example is uh, Narhumea, Master Wizard. It's a 3 3 for 4 with flash. Winners of the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcerer you control, and you can choose new copies for it. Other wizards you control get plus one, plus one. And this set, if they if they revealed that to be an uncommon, it would have made sense. But considering it does like multiple things, and it's like this is like the leader of the wizards, like it, it makes sense for this card to be a mythic rare. The the Baneslayer Angel, it makes sense to be a mythic rare. But then you have all of these other cards that have that have like specifically unique effects that it's like, okay, yeah, that feels like a rare, but it doesn't it's not like it's not beating you over the head with power. And they put up a lot of the most efficiently powerful cards in this set, and I think you'll agree with this at the uncommon slot. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uncommons that are. Yeah, so this is the section for like next week, but there's a lot of a lot of powerful cards that common uncommon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they've reset it because it's like okay, this is something that you need to you need to have so you can play in tournaments. Yeah. Um, if it's if it's not a, a really special effect, like if it's a fairly generic effect, then it's okay to print this at uncommon. Yeah. Like, if it's just solid creature removal or just, like, tempo-type tempo, tempo type cards, this is okay to be uncommon. If it does something unique that has to have a special name to it, then it's fine to be rare. And if it has this large feel or it's this important figure, then that's going to be a mythic rare. Do you think if they, if Rathus Contempt was printed in the set, would be rare or uncommon? I think based on the name, it would be rare. Okay. But if it's... But uh, only because... It has Planeswalker on it, and cards that say Planeswalker tend to be rare or mythic rare. Not always, but yeah. Like, there's like, there's like Gideon's Intervention or Johnny's whatever, Johnny's Pride Mate, or... Well, Johnny... Uh, no, 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 I don't mean the name, like Vraska. It says the it interacts with Planeswalker-type cards. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And Gideon's Intervention is a rare anyway. I mean, I mean Gideon's... The one that destroys a creature, some some sort of creature, or deals, deals four damage to it or something. Gideon's, Gideon's Reproach. 
or something. something. It's okay, Bethard. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I meant I meant uh, cards that say the word because right, the right, Sims Frosca right. says creature or planeswalker. Right, gotcha. Um, but he, he, outside of that, it's just like well, even even the set is that there's a card that does that, right? That's, that's actually uncommon. That destroys a uh... no, actually, it's just a creature. It destroys a creature. Yeah, it's not planeswalker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It doesn't. It, it it interacts with your own planeswalkers, but not your opponent's planeswalkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, like you were saying, like there's this deck, this, this set is just, it's fun. Yeah. Like this looks like the most fun magic set we've seen in years. There's, there's, there's so many, there's so many cards are like, Hey, build around me or Hey. Yes. Know, like dozens, yeah. literal dozens of cards. Yeah. There's so many that, that it's going to be impossible to build around all these cards, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's just sweet. And, and on top of all, top of all that, there's like. Tons of tons, tons of throwbacks, like oh my gosh, yes. But yeah. they're but they're good ones. They're yeah. not just like. They're not just like they're not I, like I don't feel like they're lazy. Like it's just like, with the combination of the flavor text and the art and what the card does, it's like oh yeah. This card's supposed to be like Howling Mine, or this card's supposed to yeah. be like Voltaic Key, but it's on a creature and it kind of has some of the same name and it has the same effect, but it it does it in a new way. That feels appropriate for modern magic, right? Even like Guy's Blessing, Guy's Blessing art on it is throws back to the old Guy's Blessing where yeah the, of the sword, the sword, yep. the same sword, but it's like being uh, it's like it's kind of had moss moss grown around it, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know. There's there's there there's there's so many. Like uh, we we could literally send an entire segment on like obviously all of like the callbacks to like previous. Yeah. cards or yeah. sets or or other stuff um it's fun to see a lot of the like a lot of the older characters that are still around come back uh like squee for example probably not going to be a part of the magic story but he's obviously still around yeah and his, his card references that with how he like with how he looks he's just like this goblin's just hanging out he's got his his guy's little toy little squeeze toy it's his guy's toy yeah and he's still alive. uh and his his flavor text you got to be pretty pretty smart to live long live long as me but not being able to die has <laughs> not being able to die helps. Yeah. Which is which is great. Yeah, he just he just he's chilling. Um a lot of great reprints reprints in this set. Yeah. Um especially at lower rarities. Uh I know our friend John Suarez is really excited that Skizik, a card that he loves, is an uncommon. Probably not <laughs> gonna see any tournament play, but great for limited and for his cube. Yeah. Um uh, Really excited about the two Goblin reprints, Goblin War Chief, Siege Gang Commander. It's fun to see Verdant Force back. Uh, obviously, our preview card was Icy Manipulator, which is super awesome. Um, they just they're just able to fit in so much. It's kind of it's kind of impressive. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. All right. Are you ready to talk about some of the cards you were excited about, or I'm excited about, or we're excited about? Was there anything before we before we get to before we get to that part? Is there anything sure. that we want to any, anything oh, actually, else before yes. we get to specific before, cards? Before we get to that, I have a, a small a small rant slash side note. Oh baby, hold on. Let me let me sit down. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Please, wizards, stop spoiling the story by showing us cards like embolse clutches. Or Teferi, or oh, the Teferi, or the Black Blades, freaking flavor text. Like we got so much story spoiled because of these cards, and all I ask is, you know what? Put the story before the put the story before all the cards are spoiled, or give us obviously the story's finished, or give us two stories per per week. Like it's just so tilting to like be reading the story, and this story is going freaking slow. It's slow. It's building up to like something it's, something epic. Well. And, there's 12 parts to the story, which is by far, by far the most right. that we've ever had. Right. So, like, it's building up. It's a lot of build-up, a lot of build-up. And, like, that, the build-up is, like, kind, kind of destroyed because the key parts, or, or some of the key parts, some of the huge parts are on these freaking cards. And, like, and it's not just the, the stupid story, story spotlight cards. Yeah, yeah. It's on, like, literally the, the – uh, one of the biggest spoilers in the entire set is the is the black blade equipment. Oh my god! Yes, the flavor text on that, like just because we learned about that barely just now, and we learned that hey, this thing kill can, can kill uh, other dragons and kill bells and lock. Oh, and by the way, 
Apparently, well, go hey, ahead. Pe- 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 people look at cards. People are going to open the cards and look at it. Well, that's the thing. Like, And what are we supposed to do on this show? Where we are talking about every week, we love to talk magic story, right? Yeah. Are we going to ignore, are we going to not talk about when we talk about the actual cards, like what the cards do? Are we not going to talk about Settle the Score, which is the third story spotlight card? We know it. We, we can see what's happening. I can read the flavor text. Are we not going to talk about In Bolus's Clutches? Like, are yeah. we just going to pretend that card doesn't exist for the sake of... Well, the thing is, like, we, you can't, because, like, you know... Segment two on Think Twice podcast, like... You work... You, I mean, you, your living is, is off based off magic. Like, I do I do content. Yeah. I do set reviews. I do, like, card evaluations. Card, like, I have to... Like, I, I play tournaments. Like, I have to look at these cards. Like, I have to look at these cards. And, yeah. you know, it, when I see a bolus card, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the flavor text. Like, I just... I read flavor text. Of course. I, I read flavor text on almost every card. But reading that flavor text was, like... Like that was a that was a that was it. Just made your heart sink. Yeah, I was like, why? Like why? <laughs> but that's my rant. Like, I really hope they take this to note because this happened in the past, but this time it just like just. This is this is, this the, is worst, the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst instance of it because you have made such a big deal, Wizards, about this story. You've hired a yeah. A an award winning, like fantasy author. Mm-hmm. To pen this story, You've, you're stretching it out for 12 weeks, yeah. which is a really long time. But then, and look, uh, the most important thing is the release of the, the set, the card set, Dominary. Like that's right, why right. we're here. We're here for the card. We're not just like obviously we're here for the story. But if they stop doing Magic story, I'm I'm, I'm still gonna play Magic. If they stop printing the card, that's that's an entirely different thing. Yeah. So I under I understand that the, the cards are the most important thing, but like. You, you can't sit here and say that this story is really important if it's like, okay, but we're going to tell you the biggest story beats on the cards, which we're, which we're making you read, or going significantly out of your way to avoid, which is completely unreasonable. Yeah, and there, yeah, and there were pick such... A, they got to they pick a side. Like, you got to pick a side. You have, you have to, like... Look, I, I, think it, I think it would suck to have to put the entirety of the story out before the set started... The, the story for the set started going. What other option do you have? No, I think that's awesome. Like, why can't that? Why can't the people that read the story know a little, little bit about the cards coming out? Like, that's awesome. Like, people can speculate. Like, if you give like the yeah. people that read the book you, before the movie, that's, that's what it's like. It's like you give us, you give the people yeah. the book, which is the story. They read it like, oh guys, uh, Teffrey's coming back. We don't know what he's going to do, but he can do time stuff. Maybe it's think about like think that's about awesome. think about think about this. If we read the story, and I'm gonna. Spoiler alert, but not really because it's a card. What are you gonna not read? What are you gonna not read the card? Yeah. <laughs> um. So the card uh, settled the score, which whatever. I'm just gonna go. I'm just. Go, I'm going in. Go. It go. shows. It shows Liliana defeating Bells and Lock. On the card, says it in the flavor text. Yep. Like, what if you read the story and you were like, "Oh man, I can't wait to see what this card does because I know this is gonna be on a card in Dominaria." And then you're even more excited for the set. It doesn't go the other way around. Once it's been spoiled, you're not like, oh my gosh, I saw this card. I can't wait till I read about this story to find out what happens. No, you know what happens. It's on the card. Yeah. I mean, also, the, the third text is just, in case in case you had any kind of doubt. In case there was any in, doubt what's going the on. Art and the name, yeah. In case, yeah, in case, you, in case, that, in case you thought maybe you thought that demon wasn't Bells and Lock. Nope, guess what? Makes it clear. Here's the, here's the flavor text. This is the flavor text. Highly clear. You bound me with a contract only your death c- could end. And you thought me the fool? Question mark. One, which is freaking great flavor text, which is, is what makes this even more brutal. Yeah. It's a tilt. It's like... Yeah. Guys, I don't know. That's, that's my rant. Please, please, if Liz, wizards, whoever, if you're listening, please reevaluate this. Either like... Release the story before or something. I don't know. Like even like how cool would it be to read this? Like again, one reason is like you're reading the book before the movie, which is cool. You get you get a little insider, or um, the, the the very what, what if the very first like cards you saw were the story spotlight cards? Like the story comes out before that would be great. Yeah, the story comes out before the uh, the set. That way, or hold or on, hold on. So, so, so people so people see so people will click on the story to look at the card. And hey, maybe they might actually read some lore and then be pulled into the lore. Like, how cool is that? Like, that's or, like promoting both two things. Or, or what? Or what? 
you have the story before the set starts getting previewed, like you suggested. Yeah. And at the time that the story spotlight card happens in the story, you preview the card and the story at the same time. No way. I know it's cra- it's crazy. It's a freaking crazy idea. I it's mean, a crazy. <laughs> but you know what? Wizards of the Coast creative team R and D. You have my implicit permission to use that concept. Yeah, any any of my concepts too, please. Please, so. I pray I pray to Erebos that you use that concept. I pray I pray to Krufix. So there you go. Well, I mean that's not going to be as effective, but I mean I don't know. He's he's uh, we're not we're not getting into that war. No, but, you're right. But it's a, waste um, your, it's a waste of your time. So we should just keep. Oh moving my on. god, Krufix is before everything. Before oh my Erebos. god, I thought we we're moving on. All right. Anyway, All right. okay, so. Uh, I guess we're done with our rant. Um, all right, so we're going to do a little lightning round preview for next week. So um, next week we're going to get into a lot of the magic card, like the card side, mm-hmm. uh, specifically talking about like cards we think are great in 60 card formats. We'll make sure to have a whole segment on 100 card um, or single card formats, <laughs> more so you have to say now. Um, but why not, we're each going to do this week uh, a, a really quick recap of our top five each of our top five cards that we're most excited for yeah. in this set. These cards aren't like the best cards in the set. These are cards that just like... We're it actually has to... nothing to do with how good they necessarily are. Yeah. Just that we're excited that they exist. Yes. And guys, card, usually cards I'm excited for, I try to try to build around a couple times, but... That's right. So you should, you should look for these. <laughs> All right. Uh, Spoiler alert. Uh, Ollie had to chop off several cards from his list. Yeah. So... I did. They're so big. It, so it's really it was really tough for him to narrow it down to five. Okay, I'll let you I'll let you start though. Yeah, it was too big. That's what she said. Um, precognition. Oh, I got it. All right. Pre-cogn- precognition field. If you guys don't know what that is, pre- precognition field is the um. Should I pull this up? It's the enchantment. Actually, why don't we just keep? So if if you, in the interest of time, we're just going to say the name of the card and what we think instead of going into what the cards do because I think. We spend a lot more time than we think we are on okay. that, that. Precognition field just reminds me a lot of Future Sight. It lets you look at the top priority library, and you can exit the top priority library. You can play if it's like an instant sorcery. It's very like Future Sight-esque, and I think it's awesome. So that's like a throwback to Future Sight. I'm like, sweet, I want to play that. Yep, um, awesome. Next one is Sylvan Awakening. Sylvan Awakening animates all your lands. And unlike other animation, land animation... Um, unlike other land yeah, animation... Y- your opponent can't like fumigate them and destroy them they're destructible okay your lands become yeah. indestructible they so, have they have they have the best creature keyword on them indestructible no haste oh they do have haste yeah okay that's what i said the best creature yeah. keyword. so what's great about this is like they get haste indestructible and reach this is great for an alpha strike and it's also great just to block it's a fog it's a fog for three mana or a finish or a finish for three mana i think this card is fantastic and i think it's yeah. super fun so it's kind of like it's kind of like a throwback to um, Weird Awakening, but obviously not. It's different. I don't know. I like it. It's not quite as it's not quite as rude. It's not quite as rude, but it's yeah. It's so versatile. It's versatile. It should have been called Impolite Awakening. And it should be it should be called Polite Awakening. Well, I don't know. It's got it's got, it's got haste. Haste okay. is in general polite. All right. Next one is my favorite legendary sorcery. Nope, it's not Karn's Temporal Sundering. Shocking. I know. Mark it down, everybody. It's not that. It's Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. This is the card that brings back all legendary permanents from your graveyard back onto the battlefield. That's awesome. Like, there's a time where Obzat's aid... All legendary permanents. Permanents, yes. Not just creatures. Permanents. There was a time when uh, I tried to play Obzat's aid and bring back, like, Nicol Bolas Planeswalker or whatever, because Obzat's aid brought back permanent. And this thing just brings, like, all of them. Like how sweet yeah. is that? Like you can very sweet. This is like a, this is like. What's a card that animates all creatures? Like, from your graveyard. What? Yeah, sure. I don't care. It's like, I mean, all graveyards rise to the dark realms. All right, rise to the dark realms. Sure, whatever. This remains planeswalkers, guys. It's a re- it's re- for planeswalkers. Like, Atraxa or just standard somehow. But anyways, it's cool. Uh, and the next one is, I think, my, my favorite Oath. Uh, Oath of the Fairy. Uh, the, the, the ETB effect is freaking awful for five mana, but the ability is so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, 
it's it's not i mean it's awful for five mana but it's not awful it's pretty bad compared to like momentary blank and like cloud chip it's, okay, it's awful no that's what i just i said the, i said the effect itself is not awful it's just no. the mana cost yes yes the mana cost is like atrocious it's like it's okay. you're paying way too much for this mana cost it's like you yeah. are getting ripped off but, but but the ability is unparalleled it lets you activate planeswalkers twice instead of once so this means like nissa Vo- nissa vital force comes into play plus her ultimate her that's kind of cool right <laughs> i mean yeah it's, it's just cool it's, it's very it's very unique effect uh twice per turn it just makes your gear start turning cool card favorite oath i'm, ex- I'm excited to try it out uh, before you before you go on um if you're playing in a four-player game of commander and you have oath of teferi and teferi temporal archmage oh, the mono blue teferi you can activate uh your planeswalkers eight times before you're in in one turn cycle wait what just just something to think about anyway that's not gonna that i believe you but that's crazy all right and the last card is a card that's very that's very dear to my heart um the mirari conjecture i just love the mirari is one one of my one of my favorite decks when i first started playing it was copied spells and stuff It it was super cool yep i loved it too probably played it in a different deck than you but mono black i know you did yep yep I played it. That was that was that was my first my first uh, my my first good was, like competitive deck. It was a great one. Yeah, I played it in Cutting Wish with uh, the Beast. Mariah's Wake. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was great. Um, but this card too, like it buys it, it gets you back an, an instant, gets you back a sorcery. Then one turn lets you do what just copy all your spells. It's yeah. it reminds me of like, I feel like, I feel like it's more playable than Swarm Intelligence. I tried really hard to play Swarm Intelligence. Yeah, and you certainly I, have. Yeah, I have, and this is just, this is gonna be sweet in like a mastermind mastermind deck, where I can like play this, buy back like Brass's Contempt, buy back Fumigate, and then on my and then on my turn when it's time to copy spells, I can like I can mastermind acquisition for a Torment of Hailfire, for for, mm-hmm. for example, or just whatever, or, or or double Doomfall. I don't know. Yeah, I think this card's sweet. Sweet. I'm excited. To, I'm excited to play with it and just it's just cool in general. Okay, I'm gonna get to my uh, my top five in no particular order. I'm just gonna go down the list. Yeah. Um, uh, Thran Temporal Gateway. Uh, this card, in addition to having some crazy story implications, which I'm sure at some point we will talk about. Yeah. Um, but this is this is another card again because it has historic on it that's just gonna get better with time. Yeah. You have Planeswalkers that cost ten mana, eleven mana, twelve mana at some point. Now they're four. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in play. Anything. Anything you got. Instant speed. Uh, there's not been a card that interacts with, with Planeswalkers in this way yet. So, I don't I know. Like Eureka, like the only one, but that's like... Uh, okay, yeah, reserve list Eureka. Yeah, I mean, you you, you asked. Or... That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um, uh, next card is Helm of the Host. Uh, this card does some crazy stuff with copying copying creatures because it copies uh it copies legendary creatures they're it makes a to- token of them they're not legendary and they don't go away in a turn which is really, the really crazy part yeah this is like an easy this is going to be an insane commander card it's going to have combo combos written all over it uh the next one and ollie i know this is a card you're also really excited for yeah. is lich's mastery uh this is i think is without a doubt the best lich enchantment in magic ever Far Period. none, yeah. easily by a by a ton. Um, this card is someone's going to do some mess up things with this card. Could be Ali, probably will be at some point. Maybe I know he's going to try. Definitely going to try. Um, it's also it's cool just that super... you just counter it. Like you can like disallow the ability of dying if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah, because it's a yeah because you don't target the card; it's a trigger. Yeah, it goes on a stack. Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah, there's yeah, this is a sweet card. This yeah, is a sweet card. Yeah. Um uh the next one is uh Muldrotha the Gravetide, which is one of the big legendary creatures, like the mythic legendary creature in this set. Um this obviously is I don't know. Ollie, you tell me if you feel like this this is something you'd ever cast in standard. Uh maybe. I like it the a effect, lot. The effect is certainly powerful. Yes, I definitely, I definitely could, like, maybe a, a, a tutor target. 
I like her. I mean, I like it. It's, it's a sweet yeah. Sultai card. And um, I, I was going to say, even for Commander, like, Myoplasm isn't really my, my jam. Like, I understand, what, I understand what it does, but it's so nice Yeah, but that's, to a have... cre- that's a creature thing. And this this one you could do, it's like, I don't really have to mess with creatures. Yeah, yeah. It's great. I can just, you can mess, you can play some, like, some value creatures. Yeah, or and whatever. And re- recast those every turn. But yeah. And the fact, the fact that it just rebuys uh, everything. A- a- everything. Also, yeah. also, the art is sweet. Yes, the art is super who's, sweet. Who's, so who's, so who's is the like flavor text. I don't... Losers. Exactly. Boros people. <laughs> um, and then the last card, which is, I think, my favorite art in the entire set, in a set with a lot of really insane arts, is uh, Yawgmoth's Vile Offering. I mean, so that, this is this is the legendary sorcerer that I really like. Yeah. That, uh, the, the offering isn't vile, by the way. The offering is nuts. Who, you'd be that's silly brutal, not take that offering. Brutal offering. <laughs> you would be silly not to take it. Uh, but this is... Obviously, you have to fulfill the requirement of having a legendary creature or planeswalker. But if you do, killing something and bringing a creature or planeswalker back from any graveyard is really, really powerful. You're killing the best creature or planeswalker on the battlefield and then bringing back the best creature... Or planeswalker from the from any graveyard. Five mana. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really sweet card. It costs card. one more than Rise of Contempt. And yep. it's a huge now it's swing. a sor- it is a sorcery. Whatever. It is a sorcery. But... Yolo. But you know what? You need it to be a sorcery if you're bringing back a planeswalker, because how else are you going to activate its ability? Obviously. I think it's sweet. And I just want to make a quick quick note. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about this more in the next set or the next uh, section next week. But guys, uh, if you think if you think, if you think you're gonna play these legendary sorceries or legendary yeah sorceries, I think the best way to do them is gonna be depending on like the gods because the gods stick around their creatures and they're hard to deal with and they trigger all these th- sorceries. Sure. So if you think you might want one, you, you may want to go go out and buy, you know, maybe Ronus if you want to play the Kamal one or whatever, whatever, whatever have you. Yeah. So or I mean, I think I think there's another card that's gonna do a Let's do a good do a good job of this, but we can we can get to that. Sure. Which one? Next week too. Okay. Um, speaking of next week, so this is just part one of our of our Dominaria uh, discussion. Uh, next week we're going to get more into in depth on the card specifically specifically for um, sixty card non Highlander constructed formats. Uh, but join us next week for that ollie any other thoughts this week on dominaria before we move on to magic story yeah someone's asking you but are you going to do something on highlander format yeah of course we are well, there you go of course because someone's asking what, are, what do you what do you think what do you think I mean, I out think, there I, I internet know. land i know but there's someone asking that because you, you say we're not going to do it next week like what, are you not, we're not going to do it? it next week look i don't want to we don't we need to do it next week we need to, to put a whole segment okay for doing it. All right. I think I think that's what it deserves. All right, deal. There we go. Okay. Okay, Ollie. Uh, whenever you're ready. Oh man, again. Yeah, this is your this is your thing. All right. Do 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 Okay, so Dominaria, Magic Story, Return to Dominaria, Part 5. The most flavorful name so far. Would you agree? Uh, Dom, Part 3 was, Episode 3 was pretty I, good. See, I think, I think, I think Return to Dominaria, uh, Part 3 was, that, 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 that name is so, so tough to beat. 3 is just such a, it's such a nice word. <laughs> Time out, though. I just want to tell you guys, uh, my girlfriend's laughing at me for singing like that. She's just. Send me emojis of like this laughing face. So I hope you guys appreciate that. I appreciate it. All right. Hope listen. Hope you listeners appreciate it too. I appreciate it. I'm listening to okay. you. Right Thank now. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Ollie, you want to give us a, a brief rundown of this week's uh, magic story? Yes. So, uh, Ajani or Joria, Joria meets meets with Ajani. Yep. Um, Ajani tells her, "Yo, hey, Karn's still alive. Vencer's dead." She, 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 <laughs> he, and he, he pretty much said it, says it just like that. You're not really even paraphrasing. No, she's like, she's like, she's like, oh, I, I, I know he's here, and he gives her some time. Uh, Gideon, then Gideon and Liliana go to Benelish. Benelish. Well, they they meet up with uh, they meet up with Ajani. 
No, no, not not, not first. They go they go to a, they, they're going to be with, with Johnny. They go. Th- oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, they, they go to Benalia or whatever, and Benalia City. Benalia, yeah. Liliana can't go in because Laria is like you can't go in because you're you stink. But eventually she gets the pass. Um, Laria, Lyria, Laria flies away quickly. Sketchy. Um, and then they're they're walking. Joria, the Church of Sarah is up to something. She 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 bolted. But we'll get that in a second. Yes. Uh, Jory, Joria picks picks up uh, Liliana and Gideon. Johnny's there too. Johnny says, "You guys should not." Again, it tells them, "You guys are idiots. You should not have gone to fight Bolus. Now it's gonna be even harder to defeat Bolus because he, he knows he knows he, he's he's even he's, he's even more ready. If he wasn't ready before, he's even more ready now." Uh, you guys should listen. Um, Johnny t- uh, Gideon is telling Johnny what he, Gideon is telling Johnny what he wants to do with Liliana, how he wants to defeat Belzenlock and all this stuff. And Johnny's like, Gideon, you're stupid. Stop wasting your time. Please listen to me. We need to bolster the ultimate goal. We need to do something about him. Uh, they're like, okay, but we need to beat Belzenlock. And, and Johnny's like, all right, you guys go waste your time doing whatever this necromancer wants, wants to do. I'm going to go find some more planeswalkers. Peace out. He. He, he plans walks out to find, find more help. Uh, but Joria's like, hey, I'm Joria. I got a, I got a, a sweet boot. She's like, I'll help. <laughs> let's 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 uh let's take down this Bells and Lock. Because, you know, he's mess- he's he's on my turf and this is my turf. Yeah. They go to they go to Teleria West, uh, where the Cabal has starting to inf- are, are, are starting to infiltrate, or they believe there's some inf- infiltration going on. They find a cabal member that uh, easily get overpowered because there's like Liliana's there, Gideon's there, Joda's yeah. there. <laughs> Everybody's there, there. there. There's there's like yeah, uh, no there's like six thousand years worth of oh, magicians God. like in that room. Yeah, he gets yeah, he he's able to cast some dementia spell on Liliana, but Liliana's like, whatever. Um Joda's able to immobilize him and they're about to take him to uh, interrogate him. Then we learn about the Cabal Stronghold about this thing called the the black blade which has previously it's it's it's, it's a it's called a black blade because well, I don't know what it's called black blade but it's, it's a soul eater basically whenever it kills something I do we'll get to that when we get deep dive deep okay whenever it kills something it absorbs the thing's essence or power so it's already killed they know it's already killed one elder dragon so yes this thing will be able to kill Belzenlock. so like okay let's get this blade um but they, they don't know they don't know, they don't know how to how to break into the stronghold. They're debating how to break into the stronghold. Dory is like, yo, the ins and outs always switch. It's hard to get in. It's like almost impossible. And someone's like, if only we could stop time. And Dory's like, oh, I can't. I know it's just the person. Exactly. And they don't say who it is, but obviously they're gonna go they're going they're going to go and see uh Teferi. Well, and could be any time mage. That Joy was friends with. Yeah, it's definitely that's fair. on Dominaria. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where do you want to start? We can just jump around. Well, I like I like to just jump around. I have this little note right here that says Cab C H. I can't I can't remember what it, what it what it means. So we, well, let's jump around. Yeah, Cabal Stronghold. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. You're great. You yeah. said that. You said yep, that. Yep, yep. So okay, yeah. I said that. Okay. <laughs> see. See, I got see, you. You're I got my, you, fam. You're true. You're my true. You're my true best friend. Yeah, I got you. You knew. You knew. My I, know, I know your. I know your shorthand. I know your shorthand. Yeah. On the notes. All right. There you go. Okay. Where do you want to start? Um. Let's go. Let's go with uh, Ajani. How he's taking okay. no one's poop. No. All right. He he like lands at Leon. He's like, Necromancer. Shut up. Like you dumb. Yeah. Gideon, I'm not helping you. You dumber. Yeah. Well, he, he, you guys are going to be dumb. He kind of I'm going to go find some people that aren't going to be he dumb. He kind of respects Gideon. Because he, like, he understands that Gideon's like, they share this, the ally color of white, right? So they, yeah. Well, okay. I think he res- he respects Gideon in the, in, the case, in the sense that he's like, you're not sassing me, but you, you, still, don't have, you still don't have your stuff together. So, yeah. like, we're, like the, you're, you're clearly not the person that's going to help me with this. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, I think what's going to happen, this is a speculation, but I think uh, Ajani might get to Teferi before they do. And he takes the oath, obviously, to protect, uh, to be on the gate watch. But I'll, I'm not sure if he's going to help or not. 
Maybe he'll help. But, uh, but ultimately, I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna help with Buzz and Lock. Like actually fight Buzz and Lock. Right well, now. I don't think he can take the oath yet. He's on a planeswalker right now. Oh, you're right. As far as we know, he's not because because well, from the third text we know Jordan gives him some way to offer him the the spark back. Yeah, um, it's an opt. I think that uh, all spoilers, all the card spoilers. Yeah, every single one. Uh, I think I think Johnny's going back to uh, talk to Tamio. Oh wow! I don't think he's gonna work with her. We'll see. He already, he already, no he hasn't. He's already talked he's already talked to Tamio. There was a magic story from like last the middle of last year mm -hmm. uh, between uh, Kaladesh and Avancat. Yeah. Where he went to go talk to Tamio to be like, hey, this is what's going on. I just wanted to update you. And she's like, yeah, I don't want to get involved in that at all. <laughs> but uh, we definitely should pay attention because obviously Bolas is an interplanar threat. So I think because they're like T Tamio, Sarkin and Ajani are like the they're like the legion of intelligent planeswalkers. And Ugin. No, 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 no. Not like IQ wise. Okay. I mean, like they are they're aware they're not they're not stupid. They don't like right, right. The, the the legion of people that don't make stupid decisions. Right, right, right. Like certainly a Johnny and Tamio who have their heads on the straightest. Yeah, and then Sarkin like... after after the timeline has has been kind of enlightened all of this too. Right. But Tamio is more like a, a time recorder, but I digress. She's like, she's she's not stupid, but she's like she also, she also just doesn't want to get involved, period. Yeah, she doesn't she does not want to get involved. Yeah, she, she got in, she got involved on Eldritch Moon. Something really bad happened, which we still don't I know don't the understand. full Yeah. Which I mean, honestly, again, if you have not read I we need to we, we keep referencing it, but it's the um the last Eldritch Moon story, uh, where the Gatewatch fights Emrakul, which in my opinion is still one of the best magic stories. Absolutely. Not only just not only just writing, but how like how epic it is, and like its future importance. Anyway. Well, it's, oh yeah, it's also, it's also, yeah, it's also very complex, but you're able to follow it still. It's, yeah. It's it's a great story. But it's also, a great story. Yeah. Also, I want to point out too that we we finally finally get admission that here, we all believed it, but we finally get admission here that Liliana does in fact love Jace in a romantic in a romantic sense, as in like a boyfriend type deal, where yes. Jory is like. I don't. Want, I don't want to see my ex boyfriend Joda. Ex lover. Ex lover. Yeah. yeah. Ex, ex lover Joda, and she's like, yeah, ex lovers suck. And then Gideon is like, yeah, but I'll, Jace, I'll, Jace I'll, I'll think Jason suck. Bannon does. Jason doesn't suck. Yeah, Jason and Bannon does. She's and she's like, shut up. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. She's. That's basically most of what most of what Lilian is doing. Uh, it's like Gideon is like the like annoying little brother. Yeah. It's like like Lilian's like saying like some sassy remark. And, and then Gideon's like, well, Rob, uh, you, earlier on the, on the weather light, you were saying this about Jordan. She's like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, Gideon. You're yeah. not supposed but, to say any of that. But he also respects her in a way, too. It's kind of, it's like, he he, does. yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy, like, the bond they, like, the bond they had that I had no idea I think, I think they're a fantastic pair. Yeah, they are. They're funny. They're really, they're really, they mesh really well together because they're, like. In a weird way, yeah. Uh, they're so, they're so opposite. But, like, they, uh, they, uh, uh they respect each other. Yeah. Not like they don't like each other's personalities at all. No. But they respect each, other, each other's abilities, and ultimately that matters more, which I think is cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Where do we want to go next? Uh, I kind of want to talk about. Kind of want to talk oh, about Lyra. Yes, I was going to say let's go Lyra. So right. they're trying to enter this um, the city, the Benalia city, and Lyra's Lyra's swoops just like yo. Get in. You can go in, but this necromancer, no, she can't go in. She stinks. They have a, yeah. this, have, have this little dispute, and Gideon's like, "No, yo, she's here to kill. She's here to defeat Bells and Lock. She's legit, yo. Yeah, she, and she's then, legit. Yeah, and like she, this past angel helped us, and she can vouch. And then all yeah. of a sudden, someone runs up and like, here's a little note that says Leon is legit from the from the angel, or from from, from this other angel. It's like. Okay, whatever. Okay, somehow magically appeared there. Just, just, just then. But anyways, she gets it and she's like, "By the way, this note. I, there's no way this note said." Was from what did it? Girl. What did it say? What could this note have said? Let them in. I have no. Let them in. Um, let her pass, basically. 
something, something, something to the extent of like let her pass because there's no way that she's just finding out like conveniently finding out that uh, Liliana was actually helped this other angel out in some area. There's no way that happens it's just, right there. It's just, yeah, I know. It's just really weird, isn't it? It's like very like weird. like Lyra just acts really weird. Well, the thing is too like she's like okay, you can go in, and then mid sentence Liliana's like saying something. She's gone. She flaps her wings. And she's, and she's like, she's, yeah, there. okay. She's gone. Maybe like, she, so. Maybe she got. Another, maybe she got another saying, "Hey, let them in. Come talk. Come talk to me immediately, or something. Or, or maybe she's going to inform somebody that, hey, is she? I don't think she's like corrupted by Bells and Lock, but like, she, I don't. I don't. Th- I don't think. So. I don't. I definitely don't think so. No, but like, it's weird that like, as soon as Leon's like, "Hey, I'm, I'm killing Bells and Lock. I, I, I have intel on him." Lara, Lara just like gets out of there. Like, like she's she's got to do something important or. That's yeah. that, that's what it felt like to me. It's def, uh, it's something. So there's 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 something is just like not unsettling, but it just it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't add up. Yeah, I know. We'll find out. Uh, come next week with them with when more when more cards are spoiled. <laughs> oh, I wish it was a joke. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's flavor text somewhere. That yeah, that's, probably that's so. It, and in the moment where Lyra revealed her betrayal against the yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So, yeah, they're gonna go back. Next, since now, now, now it's gonna happen. Now, now, it's kind of sucks because that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna talk to Fairy. To Fairy is gonna help them. To Fairy is gonna get a spark back. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna succeed in getting the black blade from the stronghold. Okay, getting... yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that card. So, or talk about excuse me, talk about that card. Uh, talk about that uh, part in the story where Gideon's like, he seems like, he says verbally, he's like, oh, that sounds. He's like, no, 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 we don't want to use that soul drinker weapon. That's no. He's like, you dude, you're you're asking, you are asking a lot of questions, and you were like, oh. We had defeated a uh, elder dragon. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we definitely shouldn't use it, but that is very interesting, and I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. Yeah. Well, Liliana well, well, wants it for herself. She's just she wants the power. Well, Liliana's like Soul Drinker. That sounds great. Yeah. I have a chain veil. This thing's like type of energy. I have this voice in my head too. Like whatever. Yeah. It's like yeah. I mean, like, well, I mean, I mean, just, just another thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for, I mean, pack okay. for more power. So the black blade. Yeah. Uh, Hakan. Dakin. Dakin. Hakan from Strong from uh, Cold Snap. He has a black play too, isn't he? Yeah. He no, was... no, da- Dakin. No, that's that's Corlash. Oh, yeah, Corlash heir to the black blade. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but so Dakin black blade. Dakin, as he was kind of um, creating. Or trying to gain the power in the Black Blade, he obviously he he when it was created, he used it to kill enemies, right, and drank their souls when he killed them. But he realized he's like, I need to kind of he's like, I need to figure out how to supercharge this thing. So you know what he did? What? This is some. This is like some. This is some dark stuff. He calls over his son. Oh my God! He. He, je- he does what Luke does, Jedi, kills all the babies. No, he literally calls over his son. He's like, hey, son, come here. He's like, yeah, dad, what's up? He's like, stand there for a second. He takes a sword out, and he drives it into his chest. Are you kidding? Killing him. No, I'm not kidding you. Holy drives it into his chest, killing him, pulls it out. It, it eats his soul, and he just looks at it, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to do this like 10 more times. And that's it. Wow off this weapon is corrupting fully so oh i see what you're saying you're saying the wielder like becomes corrupted think of this as oh yeah for sure uh think of this as like the ring in lord of the rings okay yeah that makes sense so you can still like fight it or which Frostmourne. is why it's gonna be really which is why it's yeah in world of warcraft yeah yeah so i got that reference because of hearthstone yeah um but this is going to be really interesting because you have the character who's the oh, most like, Jesus like, Christ. yeah, like, uh, like lawful good 
character in yeah. Gideon, like as far as far to the top left corner as you possibly can. Yeah. Who's going to be wielding this weapon? That's going to be at odds. Like what this is doing is going to be totally at odds with him because like the difference is like the chain veil is is similar in a way that it's corrupting, but it's more like enhancing of the powers. It just it just so happens that like you know. Liliana's use of it and how she acquired it was with, you know, it's with like Onaki spirits. Right. Well, the, well, yes. And uh, it, it, from what you're telling me, it seems like the Black Blade is more mind warping to the point of like more power, more power. Like actually, like all changes changes who you are as a person. Yes. Whereas with a with a with a veil it doesn't really like with a veil you'd be like hey yo Onaki spirits shut up I'm not using you. The blade yeah. actually be well, almost like I'm probably, probably probably almost fuses with you and messes up your brain. Like I can imagine, like killing your own son to feed the thirst. Of the like blade. not not just not just killing like not caring, yeah, not, not, not not blinking and not yeah nonchalantly. Yeah. And then is like and then looks at looks at it and is like, yep, need, need, that worked need, that worked but not good enough. Need to, need to more of this. Just keep need going. to more of this. That's crazy. So, uh, prediction. I think somewhere down the line in the next year we see a black white Gideon planeswalker. Oh boy. Makes That's sense. Sweet. Holding the sword or no sword? Oh, with the sword. He's a, he's never let You think you think he's going to want to give this up when he gets it? Never let it go. Yeah, so it's def- Gideon, definitely Gideon yeah, Gideon is a warrior. The ring. <laughs> yeah, Gideon is a Gideon is a warrior. Well, here's the thing like once he okay, so like the thing is Gideon's like white alignment thinks like this is the weapon that I need to defeat the ultimate evil in the multiverse, which is nickel bolus. Right. Yeah. So he's like, well, whatever happens. And this is a lot how Urza thought, which is why it's interesting. Uh, he's like, I understand that this weapon is really dangerous and it can be very corrupting to me, but I'm using it for the greater good of defeating Bolas, so, so, right? So everything's worth it. Whatever, whatever, whatever I have to kill or do. Well, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he thinks that right now. No, 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 no. Oh, no, of course not. Not right now. No, no, no. But I think because like right now he's just like, okay, this could be a useful tool, even though I think it's really dangerous. But then maybe once he gets a hold of it, he's like, well, I do need to defeat Bolas, so that's what this is for. So whatever actions I'm taking to get to that point you know, is, is ultimately for the greater good. Yeah, right, right. And that's that was right. exactly what Urza thought. Well, Urza was right, though, too. Like, that's, that's the only reason he wasn't crazy. You're right. And is, yeah. is Gideon? Will um, Gideon you know, be? I don't know. That's a good question. It depends, though. Like, after the Frixians died... Well, luckily, it's weird because Urza died while he, when he killed the Frixians. So if Gideon lived... Well, I mean, not really. Urza... Well, yeah, sure. I, I, guess, mean, he, I guess technically. Yeah. Yes, he died. Um, and then... Um, well, I was gonna say he died before that. Sure, he didn't, he didn't really. Cause, really like, it was, a, it was a, they, they, they're, they're both gone for a long, very long time. Urza was dead. Frixians were gone for a very long time. Um, but this is this is a little different. So if if if, if they do defeat defeat Nicol Bolas, we'll see what happens afterwards. But who knows? I imagine the longer you hold this blade, the, the more corruption it, it bestows on you. So I don't think Bolas will go down going down anytime soon. So I don't think so either. And. Uh... The question is, once Gideon gets a hold of this weapon, he, he's not gonna, again not going to want to give it up. Who is going to make him be rid of it? I don't know. Liliana. We'll see. We will see. If, if only we didn't know what we know from magic cards, but yeah, we'll do our best. Uh, anything else on uh, the flavorfully named Return to Dominaria Episode 5? The second most flavorfully named of the Return to Dominaria episode blank series. No, I'm ready for uh, the next episode, episode six. Okay. We're, we're, we're not even halfway done yet. We're not even halfway done. That's we're crazy. going to 12. Yeah. We're going to 12. That's so yeah. many. Okay, so uh, we're going to throw up a not spoiler warning. So the, the movie that we're going to be talking about this week is A Quiet Place. And we're going to try something new that if, if we... Ollie is able to we're going to try to talk about it without spoilers and then halfway through the segment talk about it with spoilers do you think do you, you think we're able to do that all right let's, i'll try to do that yeah okay all right uh do you want to give us some um appropriate interlude music for for this segment 
Again, and, and by the way, the reason we're doing this, uh, Director Che computer still not working, so he again is is virtually useless to us. <laughs> uh, for, for, for. He's still enchanted with that dead weight that Ollie enchanted him uh, with. It's, last it's a heavy week. dead weight. It was heavy. He's real heavy dead weight. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Interlude music. Go. All right. Earth Angel. Earth Angel. <laughs> Will you be mine, my darling dear? Love you all the time. I'm gonna start right there just because I'm. Okay. I'm gonna cry. Now, I'm, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Keep like, we're all we're all gonna cry for all different reasons. <laughs> okay, so again, we're gonna do no spoilers first, and then uh, then we'll we'll let you guys know when we get spoilers. So, okay. Uh, Tell me what you think. I have a lot of thoughts. It was great. And again, we're talking. We're talking about uh, the movie A Quiet Place, which is a um, thriller horror movie starring uh, John Krasinski, directed by John Krasinski, and starring uh, him and Emily Blunt. The first thing I had to do when I heard this movie, I was like, "Okay, this sounds great. This looks great. I need to make sure it is not by M Night Shyamalan." Okay. Because this is this is right out of his this is a, this is a page right out of his book. It's right out of his playbook. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to make sure it wasn't this by. This is like page nine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I had to make sure it wasn't by him. And it wasn't. So I knew. Okay. I was like, okay. So I was like, okay. This looks cool. It looks like, interesting. All right. Ollie's checklist. Checklist one. Not by. M. Not M. by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> and then I was, then it came out. I was looking at reviews. And I was like, holy crap. Like Rotten Tomatoes gave this thing like a ninety-eight percent or something. It's like this is this is fresh. This is fresh off the tree. Real fresh. Yeah, and I was just super... fresh off fresh off the plantation. Yeah, sure. Which is pretty... And I was super super stoked and, and hyped to check it out and see what's going on. I don't know what to say. Like I'm pr- trying to, 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 to spoil anything. So okay, well let me let me um, I'll, I'll guess I'll start in. All so, right, go. um. One of the things that I loved about this movie is it sets the tone for the entire movie in the first 60 seconds of the film. Kind of like um, it. Kind of, but I actually think this does a better job because it's unrelenting. Sure. In, in, in the tone that it's setting, what you're seeing in the first minute of the movie, that is, that's, that's how, that's the movie. And um, the use of, or not use of music, noise, largely of any kind. And this isn't really a spoiler throughout the whole movie. Obviously the movie's called a quiet pit, a quiet place. Yeah. And, um, this should seem obvious, but this is, in my opinion, the best use of silence ever. in a movie ever. Yeah. It's so effective at what it's trying to do because it actually makes sense with the plot. It's not just to set you up for a jump scare. Do you see Even one, though... Go ahead. Do you see that one movie where language is like the disease? Where if you speak English or something, you, you can get like a sickness and basically like go crazy and become like a zombie type of thing? Not a zombie, but like you go crazy? No. It, it, I was going to say because that one is actually a really good one too about uh, noise. I'll have to figure. I'll, I'll define what it, what's called. In, in, okay, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this movie isn't like entirely silent. There's not this, this movie isn't like a silent movie. Yeah. It just there is just a lot of moments where there's you know there's there's no characters talking. There's no music playing. It's kind of just natural noises as they're going about their life. Um, but they're, you know, it's it's the silence of the world. Yeah. You know, just if like if you're sitting in your room alone, there's not just this, this noise happening unless you tap on a desk or are walking around. Um, but it did that, that silence made the time that there was music and there was words being spoken. It made that significantly more meaningful than if it, the movie was just filled with it, like ninety nine point nine percent of all other movies that have ever existed. Uh, it was a small cast. There's only a handful of people, uh, but they're all great. Um, because 
silence and the lack of verbal communication is pretty prevalent throughout the whole movie. Uh, the actors have to do a lot of actual acting as far as body language. P- people Watching people's eyes in this movie is incredible because how much, how much story they can tell with just their just their eyes and their facial expression yeah, is, yeah, for sure. is amazing. Yeah. Um, just, I don't know. Yeah, go it's ahead. hard to go into, but quick, quick side note, the movie was called Pontypool. It was a Canadian oh, movie. the movie that you were talking about? Yeah. So, but yeah. Okay. Um, it's hard to like talk about this movie without like saying or spoiling anything, but um, I, I agree with you. It is the best, is probably the best quiet movie that I've ever sure. seen. Not that that's really, a, not that that's a genre, but I think it uses, it, it uses so well. silence effectively. I've never been so, like I've never jumped so many times in my life. Like, it was great. Legitimately, yeah. Yeah, because like it, it, made, it made me like actually made me like jump like oh n- not like not like a uh, silly like uh, like the ones that like lure you in then like make you jump you know it's it's actually like like you said it's very legitimate it's very like, Le- natural. very legitimate yeah. yeah um you you connect to these characters mm-hmm. for sure oh, yeah. um without, because without they're not it's crazy yeah just watching them live their lives. You connect with these characters, uh, because and honestly, because you have they 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 John Krasinski has able, was able to create a pure and honest anxiety that the viewer is having throughout the entirety of the movie, just like the characters on screen are having the same anxiety. Yeah, yeah, you feel all they feel. Um, I mean, similarly, yeah. Yeah, well, for sure, for sure, they're very easy to root for because they're they're relatable. Yeah, it's a family, just like you know any other family. They just are living in this crazy world where there's danger at every corner, at every yeah m- movement, at every wrong footstep, at every creak of the house. Yeah, I actually cried during one part, of, like a little bit, a little bit, a little dust in the fall. My yeah, um, but it's uh, but like you said, it, it but it really makes the horror parts of this movie. Because obviously the characters are in danger because there's you know these things that are after them, right? It's, uh, I think it's like it's, it's such a throwback. It's so nice because it's not gore and horror. Or it's not like no gross horror. It's like genuine horror with a twist of being like this quiet thing, like this this just a different different take on it. But it's like it's great finally seeing a horror movie like this. It's like I'm tired of seeing like horror movies that are just, just trying to. Forced. Yeah, forced. Everything yeah, feels yeah. forced. Or the yeah. knee jerk scare, or the or the force scare. This is like actual like this. There's, builds, there's none of that. This it, builds this cre- on you. It, it creates terror and anxiety. It's great. It's a great movie. In a very in a very natural way. Yeah. It's it never feels like it's it's never like leading you down a path of like I'm. It's it's trying to like catch you off guard. Even the even the moments that it does that because it's trying to scare you, it does it in a natural way. That's not like oh they just sho- they just shove that in there to try to scare you, yeah. To try to scare, you. yeah, yeah. Like stupid jump scares. Like if, like let's say in like a, you know a bad horror movie, there'd be like two characters that are talking about something kind of scary, and another character comes up and like puts his hand on the other character's shoulder, and everyone jumps, and there's like this big musical tone that hits yeah, to try to scare you. But it's like it was a joke. Yeah. Yeah. It meant, this meant nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not the case. That's not the case here. No. All right. You ready to get into spoilers? I can. I can. I can see you. Well, I'm just. I mean, I'm. Yeah. There's not, there's not, 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 not much else to say. Okay. All right. So we're gonna throw up a spoiler warning right now. Uh, if you haven't watched this, I would say, one, I'd say go watch it. Two, come back to this once you have. Yeah. All right. Ready? Agreed. Watch it. Okay, all right. I'll let you get started since you uh, you're you're itching. Okay, I'll just say I like this movie a lot. I like monsters. I like a lot of things about it. I just wish, God, the whole time I was craving for that backstory. I wanted the backstory. How did the aliens get here? Where are they from? Yeah, yeah. There's there's three. Okay, there's obviously three in this area. There's probably more somewhere else. Yeah. Like, please tell me like how these how these guys what. They what they would wipe out all civilization, or is it just like everyone be quiet? We can't talk on TV or anything. 
like like what's going on exactly you yeah know? yeah That's... and it's um well the thing is like i think if you had time to go it's not gonna answer all of your questions but in the scene where uh you get an overview when the daughter is in the the downstairs the basement area yeah you you see all of the the newspaper, the, the newspaper clippings and stuff like that that her dad has collected. And you kind of get a sense of like what the world has gone through. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't tell you because that's like obviously we know this this has been going on for about a year and a half. And like they by virtue of the fact that their daughter is deaf, they all know sign language, which is probably what has gotten them to this point. Obviously, they're very resilient and intelligent people, um, the mom and the dad. Yeah, except, yeah. I, I, oh. I, I, just, I just don't understand how trying try to have a kid in this scenario. Like, uh, yeah. Like, and the thing is, you know the dangers of ev everything surrounding having a child. Oh my God. And it was, and I'm not saying that it was like a purposeful option because I'm sure birth control is not the easiest thing to find. Oh, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure they also want to have like condoms and stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. How are you going to even open a condom? I, I mean, I mean, you probably op like open it, but like I'm saying like, I, I know it's, it's hard. It's hard. I understand. Yeah. But at the same time, like maybe, maybe I would try so hard not to, man. Because yeah, because because they because she I mean she got pregnant during this time. Yeah. Like when they knew this was going on. Yeah, like, like I would be much more focused on trying to get over this threat or by killing it or getting away from it, whatever, before even thinking about even attempting to have a child. Yeah. Because I the, really because a child like it's not only like the child it's the, it's a threat to the rest of your family. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Like again, these, these things like if they hear if they hear a sound, they just come out of nowhere and just basically gut you and kill you. Yeah, um, I really like, and this is gonna sound this is gonna sound mean or terrible. I liked that at the very beginning of the movie. That, um, and this is what I was talking about setting the tone. Even though this happens in the, like right in the beginning, it's still kind of a spoiler. Um, that like their young son just gets like brutally murdered. Yeah, like in the very beginning of the movie, because it's like, no, this is there's like real consequences to things that are happening. Like, it's not like the dad's going to come in and save the day. Like he couldn't. I didn't know it was trying. He, yeah. No, I agree with you. I think, I think that scene was fantastic. Cause like, come on guys, like no kid actually, no kid actually died, but like that scene set up the movie so well. Yeah. And it was so realistic. Cause it's like, you know, the dad's like so concerned. Cause he like, when he gets, he gets the little um, spaceship. Yeah. And he like, his eyes, John Krasinski's eyes are in his, you know, yeah. so many times during the movie. Uh, and it's just like, he freaks out because the kid has the uh, thing and he takes the batteries out. And then of course the daughter gives it back to him and well, he grabs he the takes batteries. The, he, yeah. He takes the batteries out and like, puts it somewhere else. And she like, yeah, she grabs it, gives him batteries too. And it's, no, no, she didn't she give him the batteries. Yeah. She gave him the toy. And he grabs gave the him the toy. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. And then he's like, he's walking back and starts to make noise and then just turns around and he sees the alien. And they're aliens. We, we're pretty sure they're aliens. They're not like monsters that were already on Earth. Yeah, yeah. Um, come and it's just like, like basically tackles him off screen, like rip, rips him to shreds, essentially. Yeah. Quick. Very fast. Yep. They're efficient. They're efficient at what they do. Yeah, again, but this is why I wish I had backstory. Like, like, how fast are they? Like, how how long can they, what, what do they? You need? always want to know about. You always want to know about the monsters. Well, I want the backstory. I want to know why. Like, how, yeah. Why? How are we here? You know, that's what I want to know. How are we here? Like, what happened? I thought I thought the world was compelling without having that information. Oh, dude! The because whole time I want to know. I need. I want to. I need but to like, know. but the characters don't know. Like, how could they know? I mean, they might like, know. It, it felt it felt more realistic. Well, the thing is, like, someone had to know something. They, Why? Because they're all over the, they're everywhere. There's newspapers everywhere. It's not like just like the small area. Well, like, how would they know where they came from or what they were wanting? Well, they at least, they, 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 I'm positive they knew if they were like local or like if they were like uh, from the earth or not. Like, or, mm -hmm. or if they're, um, like, 
they, they obviously knew they had armor. They, they, they knew they had armor, and they couldn't like yeah. penetrate with like gunshot or something. Yes. Um, they, they knew some things, but like just, I feel like knowing also knowing where something came from can also help in defeating it as well. Yeah, but I don't think they knew. That's what I'm saying. Like it was more realistic, because like I think in that scenario where like this interplanar threat comes to Earth or appears on Earth, and you don't know how it's operating you figure out things slowly about about its inability to to take harm based on the what whatever type of armor natural armor that it has the fact that it that it hunts by sound yeah but like i don't know how i don't know how people could find out and either way that didn't take away that didn't take away anything from the movie for me like the the fact that they immediately show you the monster like there's not this huge build up over the course of the movie no. that's like we're going to have this big reveal. We're going to have this big reveal. It's just like, you, know, you, you just see it right away. Yeah. It's it, it's a blur in the beginning, but yeah. I mean, it's a blur most of the time because they're so fast. Right, but you see them, you see it when they, when they, when they pause. You see when they like pause to like, they, they stop for Like when they're trying to like actually. Like look hear around more. for something. Like, yeah. Hear more. They stop and like open yeah. their things up and hear. Ears. Louder. Yeah. And you and obviously as the movie goes on, you see them more, um, but yeah, and there's like I don't know. There's, it, like, it, there's it, like three it, in the area, and then uh, will they learn that like I guess like <coughs> what are the feedback or whatever the whatever the, some sort of noise is hurting it? Yeah, um, from her um, hearing aid. Yeah, her hearing aid. Yeah, which obviously is an amplifier. Right, right, right. So um, I, I guess it's just. A, yeah, it makes it because because it, it basically think of it as like a dog whistle. Yeah, we can't hear right? it if it's too loud. Yeah, and to them it's just like well, it's it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's not not that it's too loud. But it's like the wavelength, the, the particular wavelength that it's on. Right. But their their hearing is so advanced. Obviously, they have like you know ultra hypersensitive hearing. Yeah. Where they can hear from like something small, like a can getting knocked over from miles away. Uh, that they know exactly, you know, where they're looking. Um, I really like, uh, like I said, I really liked the connection with the family. The I fact that, that they, like, it seemed like, it seemed like a real family. They're even, even in this terrible world where they literally have to be silent the entire time, they have the same things that are happening to them as, real as, yeah. as a real family. Yeah, I really, I really wish, I did really wish that at the end though, we got to see those two aliens die. Like, they obviously call them to the basement after, after they kill one. Yeah. And then it ends. And it ends. So either, either, either let me see them die, or bring back a, another a version two or part two or whatever. I'm fine with how it ended. I don't, I don't need, I don't need to see. No, I need to see them die. After what they did. I gotta see it. That's maybe the, they don't die. Maybe maybe they just overwhelm them. That's the part where I I I, I, I you know a little eye watery there when he's like tells her I love you. He's like I love you. I've always God. loved you. Sign, and then he screams, knowing he's gonna die. <sighs> that came right after my least favorite part. This is the part that frustrated me. Is okay. So we know these things are super strong, and they're claws. They're like scythes. Yeah, or like really sharp, they tear through this silo door when they've fall, fallen into like the corn silo yeah. or whatever the grain silo, and they like tear through the silo door, like like slashing at them. And then when she figures out her 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 hearing aid thing, it like freaks out, and then it literally tears through the side of the steel silo out of it. Yeah, and then. When it's on top of the car trying to get in the car, it can't go through the hood of this old beat up pickup truck. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Are you just tired? You just you just you're just tired and you're like, Oh, I'm just poking at it now, I just can't seem to get it. Maybe the first sound punctured through, I don't know. Nah, I don't know. Uh but that but that that's a minor that's a minor thing. That's a minor thing, this movie, I think. It is, but that's the thing. Like right, that's right. what I'm nitpicking. That's yeah, what I'm sure, nitpicking. Sure, sure. Uh Minor. I yeah. Go ahead. I don't, Go ahead. Think, I don't think I really have a nitpick. 
It's not nitpick. I, I just wish I knew more. You did. You, you did. That, I mean, you just want to see more of the right, right. The backstory, but yeah, I like that we didn't because I felt like we were thrust into where we like the the world of the characters, and we were living what they were living, and I think that helped make the emotional connection to the story. Like, but I really cared about these characters because it's like, man, we know as much as you guys do. Like, we're just trying to get in the theater. We're just trying to get through this same feeling of like constant fear of of death essentially or being hunted yeah um it was a really interesting theater experience because everyone was so quiet oh yeah like no one wanted yeah no one wanted to eat no one wanted to move yeah i don't know it was different uh yeah definitely it definitely was different especially like new normally you go to movies and there's just like huge huge explosions everywhere and everything's loud you could literally be like moving around or like talking and most of the time the person beside you can't even hear what you're saying <laughs> yeah in this movie if you talk you to talk. the person beside you yeah the person in the front row could hear the conversation because it's just like so silent it's crazy it's crazy yeah and awesome the, the and that's like it's the the theater experience is just really interesting and i think the movie's even going to be even scarier at home like if you if you like if you watch this if you stream this movie or like rent it on Redbox or whenever it comes out yeah. whatever method you choose like watching it in your bed with the lights off when it's completely silent that's going to be like deafening silence because no there will be no opportunity for anything to make noise like there's not going to be anyone in a theater to make noise if you're not making it no one's making it and it's just going to be dead silence yeah it's crazy I don't know I don't know this movie was great I'm really um, looking. I'm really looking forward to to watch it again at some point. Um, I watched it with uh, our our friend and my roommate uh, Ryan McKinney. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend Meredith and her oldest son Parker. Levi does not like horror movies, and I we wouldn't have taken him to this movie anyway since it's rated R. Right. Um, everyone loved it. Meredith hated it and loved it at the same time. Sure. Um, it had its int- it had its intended effect. Yeah. So I would say uh, if you have a mature child, then it's fine. Like it's just it's just scary. Like there's nothing. There's there's no like really adult situations. It's not particularly gory. No, it's not. So it's just a it's just a scary movie, but it's really good. Yeah. So okay. anyway, you were going to say. No, no, I was just, I was just oh I. I thought, I would say if I had to rate it, I was going to put it towards that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about our new rating system. Yes. So as, as someone has pointed out, our old rating system, we were saying uh, we had three different tiers. We had put a ring on it if you really liked it. Like it but not share it. We're trying to do, like, you know, social media, like like something on Twitter but don't share it. For the middle tier and then poo-pooing it if we if we didn't like it. So instead, to clean it up a little bit, we're having three, three new tiers that are similar. Okay. So the top tier is going to be the wifey tier. Yep. Because you're going to lock it up. Lock, lock, it's yep. great. You want to see it all the time. Made a profound impact on your life. Yeah, you're ready. You're, re- you're ready to wife it up. You're ready. You're ready to wife it up. Uh, second tier is the meatloaf tier. Uh, that's lowercase m, not uppercase m. <laughs> so lowercase m, meatloaf yeah, tier. Yeah, me- you know meatloaf. Meatloaf is like, you're never excited for it. You're never not excited for it. It's meatloaf. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna eat it. It's meatloaf. You're you're gonna eat it, but you're not like no one's ever asked for it. Yeah, it's like give me give me the ketchup. Right. Yeah, no one's ever been like you know what I really want that meatloaf. But it's like I have to eat this meatloaf. Yeah, and th- and th- I don't know where it came from. And this isn't this isn't like your wife's favorite meatloaf. This is just like meatloaf. You know, this is cafeteria. Meatloaf. cafeteria meatloaf. Yes, this is cafeteria meatloaf. You know what's this is like it's like you were you visit somebody in the hospital and you're like, huh? I'm gonna go down to the hosp- I'm gonna go down to the hospital cafeteria. What do they have? Well, meatloaf. I have meatloaf. Okay. I guess so, I'm gonna eat that. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's like. And then, of course, bottom tier is the poo poo tier. Keeping that one. <laughs> if you're gonna poo poo it, it's like a monkey. It's like a monkey. It's like a monkey poo pooing it. Uh, all right, Ollie. I, th- I think this one's uh, by far and large definitely wifey tier. It's just a new. It's like basically it's a, it's a it's a new genre within a genre that is it's groundbreaking and sets a new horror whatever. It's, it's it's just it's 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 the first of its class basically first, yeah. first of its kind it's it's great it's great it is it is great uh i'm, I'm gonna wife it up also yeah. for sure yeah this is my favorite movie that i've seen since 
My favorite movie last year was Logan, and I think this is my favorite movie that I've seen since Logan. This is my. It's this movie. This movie is phenomenal. Like, I think this I, is actually this is like this is like I, probably... I love. I absolutely loved it. I, I cannot my, express how much I love this movie. I think this is my favorite, or I think that thing of right now horror movie, in, a, in forever, in like forever. Yeah. It might be my favorite in, in all time, but I have, I have to think about that a little more. But um, it is it is definitely a phenomenal horror movie. Um, I have a pretty. I'm willing to watch some bad horror movies because I I feel like that's the genre that has the least good ones. Yeah. This is this is not only is this a good one, this is an exceptional horror movie. If you like horror movies, you'll love this. Oh, absolutely. And I, yes. I I thought this movie, I think this this I literally cannot recommend this movie enough. Yeah. Unless yeah. you are literally you're too scared of horror movies, like our friend Chris McCurry, uh, he hates horror movies, and this is basically like would be his nightmare. Yeah. Like his his real life nightmare. Um, unless you hate horror movies. Please go see this movie. Yeah, McCurry, he's got to talk. So this is a yeah. He does. He likes. He likes. He likes to talk. He wouldn't. He would not last. He would, no. He'd be. He'd be gone. Not last. He wouldn't last a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, Ollie. Any further thoughts on the Quiet Place? No, that's it for me. All right. Uh. So let me let me scroll down to it if I can. Where's my cursor? I've lost my cursor. Oh my gosh. It's okay. It's okay. Can I just do this? Nope. Need to find my cursor. It's gone okay. Anyway, we're at uh, question of the week. Question of the week. Question of the week. Okay. So, uh, unlike last week, this is not going to be a week where we are agreeing. Pop, pop it on me. All right. As we talk about Dominaire and we continue to think and feel and play with Dominaria cards more, inevitably, since there's so much sweet stuff in this set, there are cards that are going to fly under the radar. Is that something we can agree on? Absolutely. Especially with all these, especially with all these legendaries. They all, so, they all seem so powerful and great. Yes. So there's two things that we want to know. One, what card do you guys think is the most under the radar card in Dominaria. And you can just respond to the question of the week poll on Twitter. Of course, at think twice, MTG at JPRN01 at all Eldrazi on Twitter. Uh, let us know what you guys think the most under the radar card in this set is. And that's something we'll probably talk about next week on the show. Well, obviously we will, but I'm going to let you, we're, we're, I guess we're going to talk about our picks for our most under the radar card for this show, and that's going to be the question of the week. So, mine, I'll you start. Mine is Tashar Ancestors Apostle. Tashar is a a white and three, two two flyer, le legendary bird cleric, and it says whenever you cast a historic spell, so an artifact, legendary spell, or um, saga, a saga, it triggers, mm -hmm. and it says. Uh, so whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card from your mana costs three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So think think of this as like a uh, a different Sun Titan, basically, just recurring, okay. recurring your three cost creatures to back the back to the battlefield, like bring, maybe bring back a champion of Voyage, whatever. Um, I like that one. I like that. You, 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 me too. I like Champions of too. Yeah. I think I think this card is very very good and. It just generates value very easily. Like, like playing like there's, there's a ton of cheap artifacts, and the fact is like you can like bring back yeah. a lot of um, cheap artifacts, cheap artifacts with it. And even a modern, this card I'm sure is going to enable some sort of silly combo with like mirror retriever and heavens what knows what else, like some sort of eggs deck. But it also has two. Potentially, also has, yeah. Yeah, also has two power, which is fantastic for cards like Revelark um, to bring it back. I just think this card is uh, a very under the radar card that people should uh, watch out for. Take notice of? Yeah. I think that's a good card. Uh, I'm going to go with mine, however. It's not as flashy. It's not as exciting. And that's why people are just not talking about this card, even though this is a card we know unequivocally 
is it going to have an impact on standard? And that's because the card is Siege Gang Commander. We've seen Siege Gang Commander two other times. It's from Scourge originally, was reprinted in 10th edition. Both times it was in standard, and it actually came came back in, uh, in an M set even later than that. Every, every time it's been in standard, this has been like a tier one staple. Mm-hmm. Every single time. And yet... Siege Gang Commander, and it's like no one's talking about it. Like, I understand there's so many other things you could be talking about in Dominaria. This set is full of amazing cards. But this is a reprint that isn't getting as much love as Land War Elves appropriately, because Land War Elves is incredibly powerful and going to be really important for Standard. But this is a card that we know for sure has a really high power level. And this card is going to see play in a multitude of decks. For the entirety of the time it's in standard, and it's like people are just forgetting about it. Yeah. I don't know. It, it it blows my mind. Yeah, I think I think I think CG is pretty good too. Um, but ultimately, I'm still gonna go with uh, Tashar. Tashar. Okay. So, question of the week: If you guys let us know first, what is your most under the radar card? And between Toshar and Siege Gang Commander. For Ollie and myself, respectively, which of us has selected the more under the radar card? And of course, you can let us know on Twitter. Ollie, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Ollie Eldrazi, twitch.tv slash Ollie Eldrazi. And also, my articles come out at Gathering Magic on Fridays. Uh, make sure I have some brews going up there too on, on Fridays. If you want to check, check, some, check some of those out, some, some Liches Mastering stuff. I like that. That's where you can find me. Okay. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at jparnell1. And of course, you can find me on YouTube and Star City Games. I'm the commander versus host. Uh, we're in a little mid season break right now, but we're going to be coming back really soon. Um, obviously, Domineer is going to have quite an effect on the format. We will, we will not, we'll not let you down. So, like, subscribe, you know, you know, you know, do the thing for yeah. commander versus, you know, what to do. <laughs> uh, for the show, you can find us on <clears throat> on Twitter at thinktwicemtg. Uh, follow that for all the latest updates on the show. Uh, you can email us directly, thinktwicemtg at gmail.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitch. Uh, we're, again, doing another live episode impromptu because this is ultimately this is the easiest way for us to export uh, without having uh director john Che do anything since he is still enchanted with dead weight but you can follow us twitch.tv slash think twice mtg uh we're streaming a couple of times a week we're still trying to get a schedule finalized uh but outside of that you can also find us on patreon uh patreon.com slash think twice mtg there's several reward tiers uh that you can support the show at and we'll give you cool stuff back um we would like to specifically thank our agent of Bolus producers uh, from that Patreon tier, Daniel Hunt and Josh Lyons. Thank you guys very much for everything that you do. We also want to thank our graphic designer, Amber West. You can find her stuff at amberwestdesigns.com. We also want to thank uh, not director Che for directing, producing anything because he's literally doing nothing. He's sitting at his house with no computer. It's like he's gone back to like 1992. Oh my I don't even God. know what's going on. It's horrible. It's obviously completely on purpose. He's, like, he's, he's only he's he's doing this to such spite us that he's willing to not have any sort of computer or technology just so he can avoid interacting with us at all. It's pretty amazing. And no, there's definitely no other reason than the fact that he really desperately wants to get his computer fixed. Oh, um, you're being harsh. I'm being I'm being honest. Oh God. Okay. Uh, but that's the show for this week. Uh, next week, as we discussed, we're going to be talking about uh, our Dominary review part two. We're going to be talking about another magic story, and we're going to be covering season two of Jessica Jones. So if you want to be involved in that conversation, you guys know what to look for going into next week. All right, guys. That's the show. Right. Peace out. Bye. Have a good day. Take it easy. Bye, guys. <laughs>